Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to paint a toucan using watercolors. For a full list of everything you need to get started, just check out the video description below. Let's get started! Alright, so we're going to start by sketching out the bird and whenever I sketch out something like this I always start with a loose shape of about the size I want it to be and that way if I start with the beak I don't end up with a bird that's disproportionately large on the page. So we're going to just basically start with a loose shape and I'm going to draw it a little bit darker than I would say that you should draw it just because I want you to be able to see it on the camera. That's where the head would go and then the wing. And then the body, the neck, coming back, I'll have the branch about here, and then the tail here. So now that I've got a loose shape of how I want it to be, I'm going to go back in and make it perfect. So I have the beak shape that goes like this, and then about halfway, but a little more than halfway, it then arches down and meets the tip, just like that. And from the top of the beak, it comes down, meets the middle, and meets the bottom. And the bottom comes up and joins. So that's about how you want the beak to look. Then we have a black section that meets here, and comes around and meets here. And then we're going to come and do the eye here. So the eye's fairly large. They have big blue eyes, at least this one does. And if you have your own reference photo, that's great too. This is a bit more of an advanced sketch, so if you're familiar with sketching things out, that really helps. If not, you can always um, print it out and use a tracing paper, but I prefer just to draw it out. So we're gonna draw, this is where the yellow would be of the eye. And then the head comes back quite far and meets down where the wing starts. And then this part comes down and meets down here. And this is all white here. Just like that. And then we're gonna have the wing come out and make its way down to the branch. And then this part where it gets feathered actually comes in, out again, and then it juts out quite a bit where the feathers, sorry, where the wing goes. All right. So we're not going to have a lot of detail on this body of the bird, so don't worry too much about any of that. We're going to cover it over. And a lot of these pencil lines will actually erase after when we come in with an eraser at the end. So I'm just going to draw shape of a branch kind of arching down and up and this branch isn't going to be very detailed and I'm the reason I'm filling it in completely and I don't have any feet is because for me it's easier to add it in and then take the take the feet out after with an eraser so this comes down the body comes down and then it actually flares out a little bit for the tail. So you can see where those original lines are. I've gotten rid of a lot of those and that's totally okay. So we're just going to have a little foot that wraps around and we'll do the second foot right here. And I'm keeping these feet fairly light just like that. So I just grabbed an eraser and I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of those parts that we don't want. And it's easier to erase it before we get the watercolor down. And if you did some of your lines a little bit too dark, now's a good time to lighten them up with the eraser. I'm not going to, I want you to be able to see very easily where I've gone with the bird, but it's better for your good piece to not have any dark lines. All right. So now we're ready to start adding in some color and I'm gonna actually start with the background first. And I'm going to take a medium round brush and it looks like this. And what I like to do is just very loosely 
lay on some water. And don't worry too much about whether it goes in the bird or outside of the bird. This part's all white here, so I might even blob a little bit in there. But I'm not gonna go onto the beak where it's yellow. And I'm not gonna go too much onto the bird. If it happens by accident, that's totally fine. But I'm not gonna do it too much. And I'm gonna start with this side and we're just gonna lay in a bit of green and that's gonna represent the background. And we're gonna use a bit of um, the permanent green or any light colored green that you have just by laying it in where you've already added, where you've already added some water. And we'll naturally get a little bit of variation just based on how much water it picks up. I'm gonna add a little bit down here where the branch is. And I, you can see I'm kind of contouring the branch here. That's what you wanna do. I'm gonna take a little bit of teal, add a little bit of teal in over here where I've added some water. And with most of my paintings, I do a lot of the splatters at the end, but for this piece, I'm gonna add a few in right at the beginning and just taking any brush you have that's a little, I have a wide flat brush, but any brush you have that's a little bit bigger, I'm gonna add a few in right now for the background. And you can add them later as well, um, but this just helps create a little bit more of a dimension if you add some in right now. So where it's wet, I'm adding some as well. And that's kind of what I want for a background. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but on this side. And you don't want it to go too far. You're not trying to fill up the whole page. You want the amount of water you use to really vary. So some places I have more, some places I have less, but overall I'm having it almost everywhere around it. We're going to go ahead and add some on the bottom here too, just like on the other side. And then using my angle brush or any fine tip brush, you can go in and add more green. Same with down here. And the more water you have on the page, the more it's gonna spread. And I'm gonna go back and add a little here. Sometimes I like to bounce around as, I, as the painting's drying. So I notice here it's drying already. So I'm gonna add a little more to darken that. As watercolor dries, it'll always lighten. So you may find that you go in with another layer after. That's totally okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of teal around the head. If you have turquoise, that works too. I have this specific teal color that I always like to use. Like I said, I do list all of my favorite colors in the video description below. Now I'm going to do a few more splatters again. Here's some green ones. And I like to do a mix of sizes. The more water you have on the brush, the bigger the splatters are gonna be. Um, the closer you go to the page, they'll just like different things, create different splatters. Have fun with it, figure out what works. If you're nervous about going to town on the actual painting, just do a little practice sheet to see how the paint reacts depending on what you do. But this is the basic idea. I'm just moving around the painting, adding more. If you get too many little individual ones, you just do some clear water over top, it'll change up the size. But that's basically what we're trying to get down for a background. And I have some paper towel nearby where I'm going to dab up a few of the areas where I've got quite large pools of water. With watercolors, sometimes the pools of water take a really long time to dry and I don't always wanna wait that long. And I don't feel like it adds a lot to the painting to have the large pools of water. So I'm gonna let this dry completely and we're gonna add a little bit more to the background once it's done. But for now, this is a good background layer. All right, now that your background has had time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and do the beak. So for the beak, there is a black circle at the end. So we're gonna leave that out, but we're gonna add in yellow everywhere else. And the way we'll do that is by first adding down some clear water. So just fill in all but the end with clear water. And then take a yellow, any yellow you have, I like a nice bright yellow. And we're gonna go in and add it to the center. And your yellow should bleed quite a bit. If it's not bleeding a lot, that means you haven't added enough water and that's okay. You can go ahead and add a little bit more. 
like I said, we're leaving the end black. It's like a little circle that goes on the end. We might make it a little bit bigger, but for now I'm doing like that. And then we're gonna take a bit of orange. Any orange you have is fine. We're just gonna drop the orange in along the bottom. And the water should naturally carry that orange in. And I'm using the tip of my brush. If you have a liner brush and you wanna use that, that's totally fine. But we're basically getting the variation because we have that water in already. This is an orange gouache, so it's quite strong. If you don't know the difference between gouache and watercolor, gouache is basically just a little bit more opaque. I bought this orange gouache a long time ago and I am trying to use it up, so. It always, I always have to remind myself that it's a little bit stronger. I'm gonna take a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of red right here. All right, now I'm going to do the bottom of the beak. And for the bottom of the beak, I'm gonna to wanna to leave a little thin white line between the two so that it doesn't just take all the color right away from the top. So the reason it's not all of a sudden bleeding in here is because I left the line. Now you could also just wait for it to dry. Um, that works fine too. It depends how much time you have, how long you want it to take. I sometimes just leave thin white lines between different sections and that allows me to keep moving. So I'm using orange in the bottom. And now it's okay if it touches because now you're adding more color. So it's not gonna pull all the color from the top. All right, so we'll do that. And then what I'm gonna do is take my flat brush that we had used before. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna drop in some yellow splatters that lead up and down and around the beak. And then I take a bit of clear water and have that beak bleed out a little bit into the background. That's just part of loose watercolor, having some fun with it, allowing the colors to merge into the background a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do the black at the end, but for the sake of moving on, we're gonna take a fine brush and I'm gonna do the part around the eye now. When I'm doing a watercolor painting, I'm always sort of bouncing around the picture. We're just gonna set this little part up by using clear water first, then a bit of yellow paint around the inside, around the outside, and allowing it to just make its way around the eye. But that's all I'm doing here. When I do the black, it'll sharpen that right up. All right, so now we're gonna move into this part of the toucan, which is white. And I like to represent white with blues and rainbow colors, but for the sake of this, because I'm going to have a lot of green in the background, I'm just gonna add in a tiny touch of teal for this part. Like I said, we're going to come back in and do the black after this is all dried. So I'm not worrying too much about my lines being perfect or the pencil lines. I'm going to take that same flat brush and just add in a few splatters. And then while I have that on the brush, I'm actually going to go into the background and add a few more. Maybe some green ones too. Keeping this painting very loose, having fun with those splatters. If you get some like that that are way too big, you can just add some more clear water around them and that'll break them up. The reason I like to do this now is because I'm going to have to wait for a lot of parts of it to dry. Um, before I do the black, because with the black will bleed into everything. So I might as well do some of those high, high drying, is that the way to put it? Um, do some of those parts that require quite a bit of drying time, like the splatters in the background. So that's my reasoning. All right. 
So the next step is to let this dry and then I'll come in and I'll show you how to do the body. All right, now that your background has had time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and do the beak. So for the beak, there is a black circle at the end, so we're gonna leave that out, but we're gonna add in yellow everywhere else. And the way we'll do that is by first adding down some clear water. So just fill in all but the end with clear water. And then take a yellow, any yellow you have, I like a nice bright yellow, and we're gonna go in and add it to the center. And your yellow should bleed quite a bit. If it's not bleeding a lot, that means you haven't added enough water and that's okay. You can go ahead and add a little bit more. Like I said, we're leaving the end black. It's like a little circle that goes on the end. We might make it a little bit bigger, but for now I'm doing like that. And then we're gonna take a bit of orange. Any orange you have is fine. We're just gonna drop the orange in along the bottom and the water should naturally carry that orange in. And I'm using the tip of my brush. If you have a liner brush and you wanna use that, that's totally fine. But we're basically getting the variation because we have that water in already. This is an orange gouache, so it's quite strong. If you don't know the difference between gouache and watercolor, gouache is basically just a little bit more opaque. I bought this orange gouache a long time ago and I am trying to use it up, so. It always, I always have to remind myself that it's a little bit stronger. I'm gonna take a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of red right here. All right, now I'm going to do the bottom of the beak. And for the bottom of the beak, I'm gonna wanna leave a little thin white line between the two so that it doesn't just take all the color right away from the top. So the reason it's not all of a sudden bleeding in here is because I left a line. Now you could also just wait for it to dry. Um, that works fine too. It depends how much time you have, how long you want it to take. I sometimes just leave thin white lines between different sections and that allows me to keep moving. So I'm using orange in the bottom. And now it's okay if it touches because now you're adding more color. So it's not gonna pull all the color from the top. All right, so we'll do that. And then what I'm gonna do is take my flat brush that we had used before. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna drop in some yellow splatters that lead up and down and around the beak. And then I take a bit of clear water and have that beak bleed out a little bit into the background. That's just part of loose watercolor, having some fun with it, allowing the colors to merge into the background a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do the black at the end, but for the sake of moving on, we're gonna take a fine brush and I'm gonna do the part around the eye now. When I'm doing a watercolor painting, I'm always sort of bouncing around the picture. We're just gonna set this little part up by using clear water first, then a bit of yellow paint around the inside, around the outside, and allowing it to just make its way around the eye. That's all I'm doing here. When I do the black, it'll sharpen that right up. All right, so now we're gonna move into this part of the toucan, which is white. And I like to represent white with blues and rainbow colors, but for the sake of this, because I'm going to have a lot of green in the background, I'm just gonna add in a tiny touch of teal for this part. Like I said, we're gonna come back in and do the black after this is all dried. So I'm not worrying too much about my lines being perfect or the pencil lines. I'm gonna take that same flat brush and just add in a few splatters. And then while I have that on the brush, I'm actually gonna go into the background and add a few more. Maybe some green ones too. 
keeping this painting very loose, having fun with those splatters. If you get some like that that are way too big, you can just add some more clear water around them and that'll break them up. The reason I like to do this now is because I'm going to have to wait for a lot of parts of it to dry um, before I do the black, because with the black will bleed into everything. So I might as well do some of those high, high drying, is that the way to put it? Um, do some of those parts that require quite a bit of drying time, like the splatters in the background. So that's my reasoning. All right. So the next step is to let this dry and then I'll come in and I'll show you how to do the body. All right, so now that um, all the lighter parts have had the time to dry, we're gonna go in and add a few more sections. Um, so I'll start by doing a little bit of blue on the eye. I'm actually gonna use my teal color as a base for the eye. I'll just go in, so even a little bit dark. If I wanna lighten it, oftentimes I just take a bit of clear water and lighten it. And then I'm gonna take some Prussian blue. I'm just making my way around the bottom of the eye. I'll add in a little bit of blue. That's gonna add a little bit of variation. So while it's still wet, if you add the dark blue, it, it'll bleed nicely. All right, so we're gonna add in some of those dark spots now, starting with the tip of the beak. So I'm gonna add clear water in first, just like I always do. Make it about this big. And then I'm actually going to take some dark blue. I'm going to drop in the blue right here. And I like the way when you add the blue first, it's going to add a little bit more interest than just going straight to black. I'm going to take a little bit of lamp black and I'm going to drop that in on the top. And if I take that lamp black and I sort of follow it around, You'll still see the blue in the center. The black will be quite strong. And I'm going to have this lamp black just ever so slightly just jump off the page where the mouth is. A ricey pencil line basically. I'm covering it up with a little bit of black just ever so slightly. And same with along the bottom. Ever so slightly outlining that. And I follow the same pattern for all the black spots. So where I'm going to add clear water first, then I'm going to take a little bit of blue and drop the blue in. And I want the blue to be the predominant color in most of this bird and not the black. So I'm going to take a little bit of black now. And I'm going to drop that in just around the edge. So using my angle brush now, I'm actually going to start into the head. And I like to section it off because if you do too many large areas at once, it dries too quick. So I'm going to go right down to the neck. And we'll go from there. So same as before, I'm going to drop in a little bit of blue right here. And then I'm going to take just the tip of my brush and Add some black around the outside. And for the back of the neck, I'm gonna use the tip of the brush and I'm just gonna add a few little feather strokes. I'm gonna darken, just up by the head, I'm gonna darken it a tiny bit. But I'm going to leave a lot of this blue here. Now I'm going to move into the body and I'm going to do the body in probably I'm going to say two sections. So we're going to start, I'm going to leave this feather here out and I'm going to make sure not to cover over the feet because the feet are a lighter color. And I'm just going to fill it all in and you can go up and connect it with the head. And we will go in with a second coat on this, but for the sake of the first coat, start with clear water. 
go to here and then I'm going to take a little bit of Prussian blue once I've got that down and just start adding the blue in. And this is how we're sort of defining the body from the background. Add a little more water in just to make sure it stays wet. And then I'm going to add a little more blue here. Anywhere where that I'm wanting it to be lighter, I'm going to represent with the blue. And I'll come in with the black to darken certain areas. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of teal and drop the teal in, which will show through nicely. And this is where I'm going to grab quite a saturated black and come around and drop the black in right around the collar. I'm going to put a little bit on the shoulder and have it lead around here. We're wanting the black to basically cover a lot of the blue, but the blue will show through. So there was a point to it. I know it's going to seem like we're covering a lot of it, but the nice part is, is once it all dries, you'll still see some of that blue tinge coming through and it will add to the painting. So we're going to add this side now too, and it's okay if it bleeds into the rest of the body. And take a little bit of teal, drop that in, and then the black, drop the black in as well. And we'll, we will add a tiny bit more detail over top after. We're just trying to get a nice layer down to dry. And we can go in and add a little bit more texture to this after so that it doesn't look like a big black blob. But that's basically as dark as you want to get it. And for the second layer, we can go in and add a little bit more. Um, we're going to now go into the tail. And same as before, I'm going to take some Prussian blue and just drop it in where the clear water is. And then I'm going to take lamp black and drop it in around the edge. The goal with this li this layer is just to get a nice base down. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it in a sec. But I move fairly quickly for this layer because it's just about getting some, some color down. So now we're going to do those splatters that we had done so much before. We're going to take some blue and I'm going to splatter some blue onto the body that's going to actually go off the body as well. And we're going to add quite a few so that it bleeds into the background. See the way it grabbed that and went out? We're going to lighten that, but we're going to just let that sit for a sec. Sometimes it's going to seem a little bit alarming at first, but that's why I keep paper towel close by. All right, so now in order to lighten some of those, I'm actually going to lift out with the paper towel. I'm going to lift out a little bit of that. Same with here. I just wanted it to be subtle, but sometimes you have to lay down a little bit too much before you can lift it. And on the tail to lessen some of the harshness of that black line, I'm actually going to take some clear water and just butt up to it. And I do this a lot in my paintings where I'll take clear water and I'll just go touch the painting ever so slightly. And then I take a clean dry brush and I lift up a bit of that color or a paper towel if the dry brush isn't enough. And same with up here, I'm actually gonna lift out a little bit of this. This is how I control the loose watercolor a little bit more. You could just drop down a bunch of water and let it do its thing, but this is just the way I like to do it. All right. So now I notice my eye is quite dry, so I can move back up to the eye. And I'm going to fill in the center first. And 
add, I'm going to make sure I leave a small white dot. And then I'm going to go in and outline it ever so gently using just the tip of the brush. And we're just going to add a little bit of definition in certain parts like around here. And I'm going to add a few feathers going down this way. And then while this is still wet, I'm actually going to come in and fill in this white spot. And get rid of that harsh line right here. All right, so we need to let this dry and then I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more detail on the body. All right, so now that the body is dry, we can go back in and define some of the areas. So I'm going to start with the wing on the left side. And basically I'm gonna add clear water right here and cover in all this area here. And then I can take the black and just drop it in. Drop it in right here where the wing is. And I want it to be quite dark, but then taper to lighter. And then using a bit of clear water, I'm going to actually massage some of this right here. When I say massage, I just move the brush around. And then I take the paper towel and I actually lift a little bit of this because I want it to look like the sun might be shining on that side a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're actually just gonna lift a little bit of this color out. I noticed that the black maybe moved around a little bit more than I would like. And I want a little bit of that lifted up. All right, and then we're going to go in and add a few sort of feather strokes with clear water that I then go in and add with black after. Right now we're just adding a little bit of detail that it's sort of hard to see, but it's nice to have. We're gonna do that in the tail. We're gonna do half the tail because this half is actually, it's divided down the center. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and add some blue feather strokes right here. With a piece like this, because it's a little more advanced, you might find that sometimes there's certain things that you wish you had done differently. And that's what's nice about watercolor. It is a fairly quick medium. You can just go ahead and redo it right away. With watercolor, it is tricky to change things. And that's okay. Um, because it is quick, because it is cost effective, you can just redo them and have fun with it and learn as you go. All right, so now we're gonna do the branch. And for the branch, I'm just gonna keep it fairly simple. I'm gonna do it brown. And I'm gonna draw some lines first, and I'll show you why I did that. Because now when I take the brown, and I drop the brown in, it's gonna just be more of a gradient versus going straight in. And there's gonna be white spots. And this is how I almost always do my tree branches, is I go in with a bit of clear water as a line to start with, and then I start overlapping with some grays and adding that detail. So I'm just using the tip of my brush on the branch to add a bit of texture. And we can wait till that dries and add a little bit more texture too. In between the feet, I'm gonna do the same thing. This might be a little bit darker. And 
and then I'll have it tapered off over here. And I'm not adding a lot of detail on the branch. It's just supposed to be sort of there, but not taking a lot of attention. So once I've added a bit of gray, a bit of brown, I'm actually going to go in and add a bit of yellow ochre as well. Yellow ochre is like a deeper yellow. This will all dry, and then we can add the feet. All right, so I'm going to add a little red strip along the top of the beak. These are just, this is the stage where I'm just kind of adding some details where I think should be included. And maybe lighten or just right darken up a little bit down here by adding a bit of red. That's a little darker than I wanted, so I'm going to take some clear water, massage that in. And then I'm going to take some blue and add some fun little splatters in the body as well. Maybe some over here. On the top of the head. And I'm gonna few, do a few gray ones right here. Just having fun with it. It's hard to do too many on the dark spots because you won't actually see most of them once it's dry. It's just adding a little bit of texture to it. We're gonna let this dry fully and then I'm gonna use a little bit of white paint and we'll be done. So I spoke too soon on the last layer, we're going to actually need to add a little bit of blue for the feet as well. So for the feet, I'm just adding, once again, a bit of clear water. We'll drop in some blue to start, let that dry. And then add in the detail on the feet, but I'm keeping the feet fairly subtle. I always find birds feet look a little funny. I notice in a lot of my paintings, I don't bring a lot of attention to them. I don't add a lot of detail on them just because they tend to just look a little bit wonky to me. So I'm going to add a little bit of detail on this branch as well, just a tiny bit. So that's more than one dimension. But nothing too crazy. I'm just going over it lightly with my liner brush in varying thicknesses. All right. Last but not least, I'm going to take my poster color. I love to add in little white touches on my paintings. I feel like it adds a little bit of interest, some little highlights, and I just find it's fun to do. So we're going to add a little bit of white where the, where the beak meets. And we're going to add a little white here for a highlight. And then I'm going to add a little bit on the back. Maybe a few strokes here. We're just adding a bit of texture with the white paint. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit here. And there's actually, on the toucan, there's a little bit of white marking that shows up down here. So we're gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna just do a slightly broken line to redefine these. This is where I add a bit more definition where I may have wanted a bit more. I'm going to add a few strokes here. Just here and there, wherever you think it looks good. If you're using a different reference photo, just look for the little shine marks on your reference photo. This is where I can add a bit of the texture here. So just have fun with it. A little bit on the branch. I'm probably going a little crazy. I just feel like with so much black, I'm trying to balance it a little bit. But I think that's good. 
right there. And last but not least, I'm just gonna add that detail that I mentioned on the feet. So we're gonna just go in just lightly, adding a little bit of definition between the toes. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then the branch would probably be a little bit darker underneath the feet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of black where the feet meet the branch. And that's it for this guy. Thank you so much for doing this tutorial with me. If you wanna see other videos just like this one, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And if you enjoyed painting along with me, hit the like button too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.